Hello everyone, today I'd like to talk to you about Naema with the occasion that I got myself a tiny little 15 milliliter X-ray with this weird ornamentation. By the way, if somebody has any idea what this ornamentation is supposed to be, do let me know. I don't think it's part of the original ensemble, but it doesn't matter. The bottle is beautiful and I think it kind of shows, you know, kind of foreshadows the fieriness of the um, perfume within because it's supposed to me, I mean to my mind at least, it's supposed to be the image image of an eclipse. This is how I call it, uh, in any case, I call it the Eclipse Bottle for Naema. I'm sure it has another name. But when it comes to Naema, I've only been acquainted with this variety of fragrance. I've only known Naema as it was in the Bee Bottle. I think I've spoken about Naema before. This is the Eau de Parfum, the only version available for Naema for quite some time and it's it's rose as we don't understand it today. Naema came out in 1979 so early 80s and it was a flop like many other guerlands uh, they were flops and eventually people came to love them well some people not all of them because Naema I think is pretty people are kind of divided on their love for Naema even today I think and for you know for good reason so Naema came out in early 80s and it was not a big hit However, it gradually came to have a cult following, and I can see why. Now, I am understanding or getting to know Naima from a point of view of, of somebody who's lived through today's fragrances. But for today's standards, as I said, this is a rose that we tend not to have and not to understand today and I, I've been wondering about this before started filming because I really really am curious what you think also but what makes Naema so different from all the other roses that we have today because Naema is is rose, right? Naema is rose, and a rose is a rose is a rose, but Naema is like no other. So, what we have today, the multitude of roses, including some roses from Guerlain, well, most of the roses from Guerlain, are sort of cooked rose, jammy roses. I think saint Royal is the best example of what we mean by cooked rose. When you extract the rose oil, it doesn't smell like the rose smells in nature. And this is why when you smell uh, the rose oil, I tend to wonder how did they make Nahema to smell like an actual rose? And I'm still curious as to that. So. By today's standards, we've got all the jammy roses that kind of work well with, you know, patchouli and all the ouds and all the woody frameworks. You've got the um, big carnal, velvety type of portrait of a lady rose. Then you've got the hyper-realistic rose, which if you want a hyper-realistic rose, I think deep teaks all rose is the best option for you. And then you have this aldehydic, honeyed, sort of like painting of a rose. It's a rose seen through the eyes of an artist. And this is why I think I love Naima so much, because it's not like any other rose that we smell today. And this makes it very, very interesting. Now, Naema has a wonderful backstory, you know, as the inspiration for it. I will tell the story while I'm smelling also the X-ray, because I think, I think we need to open this one up as well. 
this is quite old. I will put on the video the, um, the date if I find it, the date of the, um, of the bottle. There we have it. Oh yes. There's the story of the two sisters, which is from the Arabian Nights. Uh, the story of Mahane and Naema, who are supposed to get married, but there's only one suitor. And Naema, who is the, the older one, realizes that married life is not for her. And she lets the suitor pick her sister. I don't know. <laughs> pick her sister, then she packs off and um, walks away and starts, you know, living her life because she is the daughter of fire. The story aside, the x-ray is a lot more fiery than the, um, the eau de parfum is, that's for sure. I mean, I've had this Abbey bottle for quite some time. This is a, a bottle from 2017. And I haven't worn a lot of Nahema, but there are some special occasions where I do. But I would classify Nahema as an old Hidic, honeyed, peachy, fruity rose, whereas the X-ray is all of that, but the rose is just turned to the max. I mean, there's no good way to describe Nahema other than rows upon rows upon rows and while i had this abbey bottle i always wondered these types of eau de parfum because this is an eau de parfum as i mentioned it's not terribly long lasting by today's standards but it does last quite well it's not a loud scent by any means however the x-ray is so beautifully powerful is so beautifully potent Without it being loud herself, it does tend to give you this wonderful x-ray type of aura around you. You, you definitely know that you're wearing Nahema when you're wearing the x-ray. And I think this is quite, quite a lovely thing to have. Now, the composition of Nahema isn't something groundbreaking. Maybe this is why most people do not even bother to understand Nyama because Nyama is a rose patchouli sandalwood. And I think it's true what they say that Nyama kind of stems from earlier Shemad. You know, when I spoke about the Samsara x-ray, I said that Samsara kind of stems from Liu, while Shemad stems from Liu as well. So there you have sort of a progression of all the Hittic sandalwoody florals from Liu to Samsara. Now this progression, of course, also includes Nyama because it is another sandalwoody, all the Hittic floral scent with a bit of hyacinth, which isn't terribly specific. It's just the idea of a spring floral kind of in there which is something you find in most of them Shemad, Shandarom onwards which works very very well it is still a bouquet of flowers with mainly rose and because it's a patchouli rose you know this combination is definitely oversaturated by today's standards but not the smell this smells completely different than any other patchouli rose you might smell today and i don't know why that is i don't know what they use for this by the way the x-ray was discontinued in 2016 because of IFRA regulations regarding methyl eugenol, I think. I don't know for sure. I'm sure some of you know a lot more about methyl eugenol and IFRA standards more than I do. But the sad thing is, and I always question whatever they say because I don't trust a thing they say in the perfume industry. I don't know the true story behind Naema's discontinuation. However, it is certain that you cannot find Naema anymore 
today. And this is quite sad because it's a very beautiful scent. And the Eau de Parfum, while still, you know, beautiful in itself, there are a lot of differences between them. There are quite heavy differences between the X-Ray and the Eau de Parfum, as I said. Now, Naema is sweet. Naema is honeyed. And Naema is aldehydic. All of these elements you can find to a certain degree in Rose Barbar. And this is why I think Rose Barbar is one of the better roses at Guerlain, excluding um, Rose Nacre de Désert, which is my favorite, but that's a totally different type of rose. But there is a certain familiarity, you know, when you smell Rose Barbar from La Relamatie, there is a certain lineage to be smelled, tracing all the way back to Naema. But Naema stands unique at Guerlain, and this is very, very interesting. Now, all of the elements of the Eau de Parfum can definitely be found in the X-ray. The X-ray is honeyed, aldehydic, spring floral, rose, patchouli, woody sandalwood, all of that. The main difference between them is that the Eau de Parfum feels lighter, sort of more airy, it's like it's more arid, it's more bereft of the um, of that fire I was talking about earlier. It's lack of passion, I should say. While the Eau de Parfum still is a beautiful scent, once you smell the X-ray, you get the lush, humid, beautifully portrayed rose like no other. And it is a shame that we cannot smell this um, in today's Naema anymore. By the way, I haven't smelled the latest Naema. If you have, just let me know how that is, because I don't know how it compares to this one. I heard that um, most of them have been reworked quite nicely. I will have to give the new bottle of Naima a try at some point, because I think it should be a bit more long-lasting than the B bottle. Quite curious on that account. When I smell the Eau de Parfum, it comes across as just a woodier, fresher, lighter, airier version of what truly Nahema is supposed to be. In all Nahema, no matter if it's the EDP or the X-ray, there are hints of Mitsuko and I find this to be very, very interesting. This is most evident when you wear it on the skin, not on the paper. Nahema is worked as a Shepra. First and foremost, this is a Shepra rose, a rose Shepra. And um, I think they used the same type of aldehyde that they used in Mitsuko, you know, the C14 famous aldehyde by now, because she is there and she is a lot more obvious in the Eau de Parfum, in the lighter version. She is green because Naema has always been, you know, fresh green rose. She is green, all the headache, but plump, peachy, and zesty, and fruity. And this is the unique quality that Nahema has, and no other rose fragrance has, uh, to my knowledge. I mean, I haven't, I haven't smelled anything quite like Nahema before. And this is, I think, what makes it unique. This is, I think, what makes it Guerlain. This is what makes it beautiful. This is what makes it stand out. It's definitely old smelling by today's standards. Definitely. Um, I think Naema also missed its mark. I think Naema smells old even for 80s standards. But I think this means absolutely nothing because Naema, like many other fragrances from Guerlain, they are outside of time, you know. Time is nothing to Naema. And I still haven't given up hope that maybe one day 
we will see a um, reworked version of this x-ray. You know, I'm <laughs> cautiously optimistic. They did release, you know, a, an x-ray um, dedicated to Rose and it is nothing to do with Garland's tradition of making rose, but you know, that's a whole nother discussion. At some point, maybe we will get, if not an x-ray, maybe a properly done eau de parfum, fuller rose, uh, while keeping everything that makes Naima so, so special. Now, if there's anything else you would like to know about Nayama, do let me know in the comments. I hope you found this review of Nayama useful, maybe. Um, if anybody wishes to purchase themselves um, a bottle of Nayama, the prices are quite high. But I was, you know, you can be lucky enough, you can get lucky enough to, to find a decently priced Nayama bottle, as I was, because I didn't pay... I didn't pay all that much for this. I think it was 150 euros and this is a very, very good price for 15 milliliters. So yeah, if you've got any other questions, do let me know in the comments. And until next time, remember fragrance creates memories and may yours be happy.